For approximately 30 years, the white train was considered the safest transit method available with a perfect track record. They were ordinary looking trains, but they had some features that set them apart from regular rail cars, especially the fact that the cars were painted white through most of their use, hence the name. Cargo cars were sandwiched between escort coaches, providing residence for armed guards who kept a watchful eye on their cargo. And since the train snaked along at only 35 miles an hour, the seven-person crew spent weeks on the rails, heading to places like Washington State or South Carolina. I had a locomotive engineer from the Santa Fe tell me he decided to ratchet up the throttle to go a little faster. And he said, you know, before he knew it, he had this spotlight in his mirrors that was blinding him. So he slowed the speed back down to 35, and the spotlight went out. And he said, they must have known how fast we were going. And the truth is, yes, the, in the escort coach, they had something to measure the speed of the train. The escort coaches were self-contained living units and eventually had full-service kitchens, sleeping quarters, showers, and community areas. The crew worked six-hour shifts, 24 hours a day, traveling hundreds of miles with endless days on the track. So when you see the rail cars, you'll see the mirrors on the side. And from inside, wherever you're sitting, you can always see a mirror out a window. And with those, they can ensure that there aren't any um, people trying to get on the train or anything like that. In the late 70s to early 80s, the white train was singled out by protesters. And even after the train took on new color schemes, it wasn't difficult to spot. And word spread throughout the vigils up and down the tracks. In 1985, protesters in Washington at the Bangor Naval Base were arrested for trespassing and conspiracy. They were released, and two years later, the government decided train transport was no longer practical so the white train was retired. So the last official train that rolled out of Pantex was in uh, 1987. By the early 1980s and the late 1970s, most of the other movement of the weapons and components were by semi-truck. In all their years, there was never a major accident involving a white train, which shipped untold numbers of weapons all across the U.S. Today, there are a couple of cars still at Pantex, sitting silently on the few feet of abandoned rails with an occasional curious employee looking inside. The general public can see what the white train looked like at the Amarillo Railroad Museum. The cars from the white train are to be restored to their Cold War glory when they were the only safe and secure method of transporting weapons made in the Texas Panhandle to America's military sites.